now. I'm fine with that. And work. Right, before and work. work. And yeah. but do something useful before you go. Yeah, get, I don't know, teach the other people in, I don't know, learn a language, teach the Klingon to the other prisoners, who knows? Doesn't matter, do something productive. There were some, um, I didn't put it on here, but because it was like, Hello, and a very happy Halloween episode of Comedians Interviewing Musicians to you. Uh, my name is Becky Joniel, and we are here with the lovely, talented, and beautifully spooky this evening, Julia Melanta. Round of applause. Uh, thanks so much for being here, Julia. We missed you. Thank you. I missed you guys, too. I'm so happy to be here. Be, I mean, we're not together, but it's, we are we, together. We're going to pretend. Um, yes. And thanks to everyone who's tuning in tonight. Hello, and, and a well very happy our, Halloween uh, episode of Patreon. Comedians Interviewing Love Musicians. You um, if you are not a patron, please consider donating a couple dollars a month to our little podcast so we can keep doing these kick-ass shows for you. Uh, obviously, I am feed, see, serving serious Beetlejuice realness, but I forgot to do my hand. So don't judge the illusion for dropping out the second my giant flippers get up here. Um, this is episode 147 of, I don't remember what it is of quarantine. It's probably 20 or 30, but what have you been up to since we last saw you? I can't even remember when that was. I know, Like right? how many years ago? I don't know. Um, well, probably um, I have uh, released a record mm -hmm. and in the meantime, and I think it was a couple of years ago when I was on, this show so i released a new record and a book 
I have toured. Um, I used to have short hair and, and, I, and I grew it. It took me two years. Oh, yes. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I wonder if people can, you know, kind of recognize me. Um, you look so good with I, this look. It's very Cher. I know. I like it. <laughs> and, and Morticia. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's what yeah, I've been doing. Are pottery now? Yeah, and I started doing pottery. Well, that, I started that uh, during COVID. I was like, I need to put my hands on in something and do something. And I started a garden in my backyard, which was very re rewarding. A lot of physical work. Yeah. Uh, but also I needed to create something because I create things like all the time, you know, songs and uh, I wrote a, a book and blah, blah, blah. But it's not something that I can touch. You know, I can touch my guitar, but the pottery thing is awesome. Like I have this piece of clay and I put it on the wheel and then, and then I get to, you know, like, like a kid, like I play with it and I get all kind of covered in clay and then it turns into something. And, and I've been selling the pieces, honestly. It's been, uh, it's been good. People like them. Do you have like your own wheel and setup and kiln? No, 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 no. It's it's crazy expensive. Plus, I really, I really enjoy the fact that I can go to a studio and it's been really great. Like I go on a Thursday or or Wednesday and it's just me and the owner and maybe one other person in the whole studio. So it's super safe. But that that way I also get to get a little um to have a little human interaction. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and also I, I'd never done it before. So I was taking a couple of lessons here and there or as for tips and it's been really cool. That is so exciting. Well, congrats on the new hobbies. I know that Thanks. and those who know you know that you are an incredible, fantastic cook. I mean, we talked Thank about you. it the first time you're on the show. It must just be a genetic thing. All Italians can cook. I don't know how, but you're a wizard. I've seen, I know that actually one of our um, longtime fan, Steve, Steve, like, yes, photographer Steve, he has been cooking from your recipes. What have you like learned new recipes during? Oh, Steve Young? Experimented? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, because I've been doing uh, online lessons. Every Thursday at five, I would do an interactive lesson on Zoom. And Steve was always with uh, with me, with us, and I would teach every week a new recipe or two, and we would, and I would demonstrate, and 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 they would cook with me, so they would get a chance also to see not only to see what I was doing, but also to ask me questions. That's and so cool. that has been fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's very good yeah. To Tonight show. I'm making spider soup. Spider soup. Yeah, I mean, um, come on. Oh, I really thought it was like some kooky. I was like, oh, it's in a pumpkin or something. <laughs> I'm so gullible. I was, I was here. Spider soup and 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 uh, and um, snake um, uh, roast. Ooh, I love a snake roast. That's adorable. Mm -hmm. um, people watching, she has a Venmo and a PayPal, but we're linking uh, the Venmo and the PayPal in the comments. So if you're having a good time and you want to support Miss Julia and you don't have time to do a cooking class, though, that sounds amazing. I can't, I would love to take one. Uh, it's pinned in the comments. So throw some bones that direction. Oh, do you want to play a song for us, Miss Julia? I guess I will. <laughs> All right, we're going to hear the first song from Miss Julia Melanta, ladies and gentlemen. All right. I guess I'm going to start off with the first song on the record that's called Castle in the Clouds. I look in the mirror in the morning, a brand new life is like a warning, I'm going too fast. Put your coffee in your mug and sweep your priorities under the rug. Go into fashion's ass. Another day's about to start. You get assigned a boring part. Not worth reading. You already know how the movie goes. Nothing that keeps you on your toes. The heart is barely beating. Go crazy, running through the streets. Go follow the sound of your own feet and never say it's too late. You paint a smile on your face. It seems 
Cause you're always running late Nothing new Obsessive thoughts thrilling in your brain What's to lose? What's to gain? You need to change your view Looking out over the scene There is nothing left to dream No castle in the clouds You go running through your mind Do it round the hands of time There is no way out Go crazy running through the streets Go fall sound of your own feet and never say it's too Thanks so much again for being here. This is Julia Malanta, the thank you wildly talented creative. Um, we'd like to thank a couple of our sponsors before we begin the Kim's Instagram stalking segment. Uh, Jake Farr at Far Guitar Studios. He is also doing virtual lessons. If you are trying to pick up a new hobby, uh, like Miss Julia has with her pottery, you can maybe pick up a guitar. Uh, there's no better time. Why not? Um, and Gerald Bailey also has some excellent cooking and recipe at GeraldBaileyCooks.com. So check that out. And if you're looking for a new home. Um, a lot of people are in, you know, midst of this crisis, somehow having to move. Share Tea Realtors with her amazing chicken purse waffles will help you find an adequate home for the rest of your quarantine. Might as well like the spot you're in if you're going to have to stay there. So uh, thanks again, Julie, for being here. This is the segment where I usually just, I give, we love to give Kim an opportunity to stalk on the internet and she's really good at coming up with silly questions uh, based on the, her stalking abilities. She's our little internet Nancy Drew. Um, her first question is, you travel a lot and seen have seen a lot of green bathrooms. Green rooms and bathrooms, I can't read. Seen a lot of green rooms and bathrooms. Which ones were the best and worst? Uh, she also posted this Instagram picture for reference. <laughs> I was just thinking about that. That's, that's here in Austin though. Yes, just writing it, no. <laughs> so you can hold your friend's hand while they pee. It's romantic. Yes, I think I think that is just wonderful. Like having two toilets, one next to each other. I think it's beautiful. I wish they were facing. That would be better. Just so you that could. Would, yeah. <laughs> and 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 even with a little table by one side, so that you can you know you can bring your drink and and com you know comfortably just sitting on the toilet and sip your wine and do what you need to do. Don't you I think? love it. What's the, and you've, I mean, you've toured a lot and you've seen, that's, yeah. have, is there any like horrible bathroom or green room you remember? <sighs> I remember, I remember green rooms that were not green rooms. <laughs> they were like, like someone's closet, like the, the, the you know, like the janitor closet. That's probably like the, wor the worst, but um, I can't think right now also because honestly I think my brain is just really like burnt like dead like I don't remember things like there's a world and a life in which I used to tour and after seven months it feels like was I ever that person did I really <laughs> ever tour <laughs> like oh, I, I can't person. remember creative blackout can't yeah can't do it that's fair Sometimes I forget uh, what I like if I have a good comedic moment on set or something. I black out when I'm on stage because I just have so much adrenaline. And I'll come off. I'm like, "What happened?" I'm like, "No, I don't know." <laughs> yeah. Oh, we have some comments online. Ooh, somebody. Well, they linked your dinner with Julia, so 
everyone go check out dinner with julia oh steve said lovely costume thank you um barb says beautiful i agree that song was beautiful thank oh you. and we've got lots of applause from juan carlo rendina Gian Giancarlo. Oh, Giancarlo. Ciao, Giancarlo. We got waves and claps from him. So thanks y'all for being here. We really appreciate you joining us. Um, the next I really like doing today. this. Oh. Okay. Barbara Joe. Hi, Barbara Joe. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Barb. Yes, of course. Yeah. The, I love them. She also wants to know, oh, what was the best fan interaction that you've had? And what was the weirdest? And then she says, refer to the dollar, the $50 bill tip. This, you were tipped oh. with, and he wrote, you are loved beyond your, beyond your wildest imagination. Your voice is inspiring. And he wrote it on a $50 bill. Yeah. Yeah, that, that wasn't even a, a, a fan fan. Like uh, I was playing the airport back when we used to play the airport here in Austin and and I just found it in a tip jar and I didn't know who that person is. I never saw him, his face, her face. I don't know. He could have been an alien. Maybe they're like super fans of yours now and they're totally going to watch this and we're going to have like an, we're going to get called by Ellen because this is going to be your great meetup. Let's right. find out. What's the, what, what, you have any weird interactions with audience? Members? Oh, like, like a million, like a million <laughs> weird interaction. Like, you know, the most common is, oh, I really loved it. But what was it? Like, what do you mean? Like music? Like I'm a songwriter, I write songs. Yeah, but how do you, what, what do you call it? Like, is it, um, what, what kind of, what genre? I'm like, you know, dude, it, it, did you enjoy the show? Great. I think that's all you need. You know, like, do you really need to put an, a, a label on it? Yeah, that's you know, stuff like that. Or I remember, I'm sorry, I keep doing this with my hair because yeah, as you guys know, my hair is really short and kind of shaved. So I'm like, oh God, I got to do this. <laughs> wigs are amazing. That's wigs are the best. You, you can't stop yourself. So, um, so, and also I feel like, I feel like a completely different person. Like I'm this. Yes, this, um, for real. That wig femme fatale. is legit. You are a different lady when you put on a full. <laughs> like I'm not my usual tomboy. I'm like. <gasps> Chris, Chris just said, it looks like we dropped something before the show. It's kind of true. Like this is like the point where the MDMA kicks in and all the hair feels really good. <laughs> like this will work. Um, so, well, but okay, like I once I was, once I was, that was not really a fan, but j that is just to give a little idea. I'm not a feminist, like hardcore feminist, but I'm of course in support of e equality. And this is just to give you an idea of how people think sometimes. I was at the Saxon pub watching some friends and right behind me there was a poster of me with a guitar because I had a show coming up like the next week and this guy is like so what do you do and he was trying to you know start a conversation and I was like really like come on but um and I said well I'm, I'm a musician oh really what do you play um I was I turned around and, and there 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 was my poster with me and, and the guitar I was like well actually I play guitar. Oh, that's you. But did you really play the guitar or did you just put the guitar on the, on, in the picture just, just for look? I was like, dude, come on. You would never say that to a man. You would never say that to a dude. I, actually, I, I saw Reese, I think Kelly, and you're friends with Kelly Green. Like, I think, mm -hmm. I think Kelly shared it, but it was a picture of a clothing line that had a woman wearing a t-shirt that said, guitarist and then a guy wearing a t-shirt that said male guitarist <laughs> and I laughed so hard because I mean it's just obviously as a woman in any in this world you experience levels of bullshit like that oh, how yeah. do you handle it like how how do you respond to it it depends I'm usually it depends on how mean I want to be honestly sometimes I yep. usually I <laughs> sometimes I just I'm just very direct and polite and say, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm always very direct. I'm rarely very polite, but um, I can't remember what I said to that guy that day. I said something like, you know, like if I have a guitar, it's because I played the guitar. And if you don't believe me, how about you come to the show next week and right. pay and come to the show? And then you can tell me if I play for real or not. I, I might, I might, you know, you might not like me. It's not like I'm, 
I'm Jimi Hendrix, but I do play it. <laughs> you know, like. Right. That's ugh, gross. This is not about uh, sexism, but I did. It is about Halloween and a poster. When I was like, okay, this the Halloween before I turned 21. It was like two months away from my actual 21st birthday. But my boyfriend at the time was of age and all of his friends really wanted to go to this concert. And it was this big Halloween show. So we were all wearing costumes and I'm dressed like a slutty Wonder Woman or something, which I didn't really know if you could go. It really wasn't that much more revealing of a costume than Wonder Woman's actual thing. I think it was just made out of lingerie. But I, <laughs> I'm 20 years old and I give them my fake ID and the door guy goes, no, that is not you. And I was like, yes, it is. And it's my it's not my, it's obviously not my picture or my name, but at the time I was in a play at the university and my face was on a poster. And, and I was like, and he was just like fighting with me. He's like, no offense to whoever. And then he tried to hit, actually it is kind of creepy. He did kind of hit on me. He was like, no offense, but the person, your person you got this ID from isn't as cute as you. And I was like, no, that is me. <laughs> if you look, and her name was Katie Wagner. Sorry, Katie, I'm putting you on blast. I went to high school with her. And I was like, that is my name. If you Google this pr production of that shit, you will see Katie Wagner stars in Time Stand Still. And I just huffed by the door. And he was like, fine, whatever, crazy. She must be serious. And I get around the corner, I like turn around and he's on his phone and he just goes, fuck. <laughs> like he realized that I was not who I said I was. The show was packed, he, there was no way he could find me. And I like snuck back in there. I was like, I realized probably I could have gotten that dude fired but I wasn't even drinking, I swear. I just wanted to go to the show, but yeah. Did he just say the, the F word? Yeah, I told you we're kind of allowed. Sometimes we're allowed, it's Halloween. Uh, okay. <laughs> slippery slope, Chris. Chris says it's a slippery slope. We're gonna end up banned like Howard Stern in his. I can hear him though. Uh, the the okay. Here's my last Kim question. Beep beep beep. This one's good. Okay. Uh, whoop. growing up was a big music was a big part of your life. Uh, you said in a throwback pic that you were already a rascal in disguise as a child. What is the most rascally thing you've ever done? <sighs> Look at that baby. I'm the one in the back, by the way. The one Clearly. in the front is my, yeah. <laughs> so cute. I can't. <laughs> the most rascally thing. Um, well, I grew up, like, I grew up in Florence, but every weekend we would go to the countryside. And as soon as my dad parked in front of the house, I was gone. I was gone and I would go to the creek um, and I, I was always like in, 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 in jeans and a t-shirt and always, you know, like with bleeding knees because I were, were covered in mud and all of that. And, um, oh gosh, I don't know if I can say this. There were some things I've done, like, you know, like pranks and stuff like that, but... <laughs> But one, one was one, one is bad. One, one is not like, like this is. It, it may sound really disrespectful, like if I say it. <laughs> I mean, well, we can redact it. <laughs> well, here's the thing, and it, it totally goes with my Morticia um, hair. Um, my my, my uh, childhood friend and I discovered this little cemetery. I love where this is going already. <laughs> with uh, with uh, people from like the uh, the end of the previous century or you know early 19 and and all of that like a lot of deaths from the war the world war uh, one or one actually and two like way back when anyway and then in this little chapel we we uncover this part and we open this this what do you call them um, um like like a little manhole like what like a little there was a hole in the ground basically and we opened it and there was bones Ugh. it was like the communal tomb for for yeah for for the for poor people mm. and there were just just bones thrown like that like like a rib next to a femur from someone else and like mrs harry's uh Chris is saying this is a scene from the Goonies. Oh no, this is definitely a. I wouldn't say Goonies. Maybe like 
it, it happened and and I and I have the pic I have the pictures of the of, of from the cemetery not of course way back when I went back like a few years ago just to see what it looked like so I I can prove it and uh, so anyway we started like we we uh, we grabbed a pole and we picked that it was it was a pretty a pretty deep hole and we picked a little uh, we, we picked a skull because we really wanted to look at it. I was always very fascinated by bones. Right. And so we looked at it and it was like this little thing. And and anyway, so that's not just, maybe it wasn't very rascally, but it, it's not even your usual, it's not really your usual uh, childhood memory. And then we felt really bad about it. So we went, we we left the, the cemetery, we started gathering flowers and we went back and threw a bunch of flowers in, in, the, in the hole. Oh, you were like a rascal with a conscience. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, that's actually sweet, though. I mean, in theory, you might have given a more respectful burial to that skull than it initially had had. Right. Yeah. And we even said a prayer. We, we, we said a little prayer. We yeah, see, you flowers. upcycled. There we go. That's fine. That's fine. That's not, that's not. I'd yeah. say you did a service to that little skull. I'm a good person. I'm him. fascinated by bones. I mean, they're pretty And I'm a good person. And it's a Halloween spooky season. Bones. There you go. That's my spooky Uh, story. uh, Kim says she has a friend. She's watching from home. She has a friend who went hiking and found human bones in the woods. That was the only context of that text. So I hope that person (laughs) was, I hope that's, I hope that person's alive in hindsight or in, in retrospect, always call the non-emergency line about bones you find because you never know. Uh, Right. Let's hear a couple more songs from Julia. She's going to sing two more for us. Uh, and before we do that, I want to thank uh, Debbie Stanley. Uh, please go to oh, Debbie Stanley for your house concert needs. Uh, right now, we're all, you know, obviously home alone, but she can orchestrate a pretty safe house concert for you. And the Wallens are long term uh, patrons and friends. We appreciate you. Check out the Wallens music, uh, they're incredible. So here's a couple more songs from Julia Melanta, ladies and gentlemen. All right, this is a title track, Tomorrow is a Bird. There's not enough time to sit and stand still. You gotta work hard, keep climbing uphill. Today's a feather. Tomorrow's a bird, yesterday's gone, you're left with no words. Oh, 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 oh,
guess I do one more. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Many applauses I hear in my head. Sure, Julia, if you say so. I'm alone now. Where is everybody? Okay. Well, you, you play one more song, babe. Yeah. All right. So this, I'm playing all, you know, new songs from the new record, which by the way, this is the cover. Look at it. Isn't it pretty? Barbara FG, the amazing photographer, she took the pictures and she designed this cover. Tomorrow's a bird. There's a cardinal. Anyway, so I'm playing songs. I'm playing songs off the record. This one is called In a Dream because I dream a lot and I fly in my dreams and it's a lot of fun and I feel very free and I hope that you guys do too. And I want to be Morticia forever now. Yesterday the sun was shining But in my eyes the moon was rising Restless child, moody, dark and wild Dreaming with my eyes wide open Trapped inside a bubble floating The city's glow sparkles down below But you're getting nowhere Fly In a dream You can't do what you want I was laughing I was hoping My bare hands kept on holding This golden heart Stolen from a star Try But you're getting nowhere Fly In a dream You can't do what you want Said my prayers Counting my blessings The gentle ocean breeze Caressing my paper wings blown far from what I know Try running but you're getting nowhere Fly in a dream you can't do what you want In a dream you can't do what you want Thank you so much, Julia. Uh, if you're just tuning into the live stream, uh, this is the wonderfully talented Julia Melanta. Uh, ooh, Barb says that song was haunting. I agree, Barb. I'm going to like that comment. And you are totally selling Morticia. That is 100%. Oh, really? Awesome. Uh, thanks again for coming to our little show. We like to play a game before the last song. Uh, this one... <laughs> The last time I tried to do weird Halloween candies and try to get people to guess the, it turned out to be wicked hard. So we're gonna even maybe try, this will equally be as hard. These are gonna be uh, Halloween customs observed around the world or spooky time uh, customs observed around the world. And then you can I Google it? Down. Huh? Can I Google when yeah, you ask right. me questions? Just like <laughs> off to the side. Um, and then, I'm going to give you a brief lowdown of what they are, and then you're going to try and guess what nation they are from. Uh, and let's see if any of the people online, if you want to guess as well, comment below and we'll tell you if you're right. Um, or if you've been to these places and experienced said uh, festives, festivities, uh, please comment and tell us about it. All right. This one is fun. Uh, during Halloween, uh, this uh, country likes to give out fruit cakes with muslin wrapped gifts inside, uh, similar to like a king cake in New Orleans. Um, but they have different things in them. Like you found a, if your slice has a ring, 
you might be getting married soon. If you find a coin, you might be getting rich soon. If you find a thimble, you're never getting married. What country is this? Mexico. Hmm. The, not, not even close. It's Ireland. I didn't realize um, <laughs> they... Uh, and I'm Irish as all get out. And I can't say that if I got a fruit cake with a ring in it, I would be very happy. I don't know if that makes any, no ma'am. Uh, the, and I there, think- There's, did, did there's a similar there? tradition in Spain though. Really? But but on um, January 6th. Oh, I know like there's a weird obsession. There's a couple, couple countries here that have strange obsessions with marriage and love around Halloween, which is very weird to me. Um, this one's sort of, meh. Uh, they, in this country, they peel an apple skin on the, like a long, like one long strip. Like they like, mm -hmm. peel it on mm -hmm. one piece and then they toss it behind their back and they, whatever shape letter it's spelling out is going to be the first initial of the person you fall you're gonna marry. going to marry. Okay, so it has to be a country where you can find apples. Fair. <laughs> but which one is that? <laughs> That's right. I, I could be a detective. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say Mexico. No, I'm kidding. Can I say Mexico always? <laughs> like, I, I have no idea. It could be anywhere. Um, um, right. I'm the answer gonna is Morticia Adams. Morticia. Uh, it's actually Scotland. Uh, again, see, I was just about to say that. Just and to be fair, I didn't use Mexico in any one of these because I and I said something to my mom. I was like, "Well, who doesn't know about the Day of the Dead?" My mom was like, "Well, I really don't know much about it." I'm like, "Okay, white lady, that's fair." But I was like, "Oh, you can't do Dia de los Muertos like everyone." Knows. But uh, this one, they leave. It's similar to like Santa leaving him cookies and milk. They leave out bread and water during the entire week of All Saints Week. So the loved ones who come to visit them aren't like hungry. And it's, Mexico. it's weird, it weirdly stressed it out that it was like, that they wanted so they can visit their, so their loved ones don't have to like find food on the way. It's almost like their loved ones like, well, we could stop at, you know, Underworld McDonald's, but I hope, you know, Jeff and Susan put out the bread and water. It's a little right. What country? Nigeria. Austria. I don't know why, but, but yes. And this one is, well, I'm just going to, it's Germany also has a tradition where they hide the knives um, in their house so spirits don't hurt themselves, which I find that. <laughs> but if you're a spirit, how do you stab yourself? Like, right. And also, you what are these spirits? being forced to see around in your house all year long that during the week of all saints week they would come over to your house and straight up kill themselves at your place what are you subjecting them to what's happening um okay this one this is called the the feast of hungry ghosts uh it's a translation it's not obviously in english um they're they like bonfires and lanterns um to guide dead relatives that return to the world and they, uh, there's food placed out in front of their portraits so they can like, uh, what does that even say? Oh, so they can fatten up before winter, which was the also word that they use. Basically like they come in, they eat all they can in the real world so they can like go back to the spirit world and be like, oh, I don't have to worry about this. And then <laughs> they burn money and fruit. And it's also uh, wildly, respected that a lot of people in this country go to Disneyland for Halloween. Okay. It's a country where you want to go to Disneyland during Halloween, I guess. Mexico. It's not Mexico, Chris. <laughs> I heard that. Um, well, but, but, but Disneyland is only in, in, in the U S and France. Yeah. There's uh, I guess that's a kind of a giveaway. Cause there's, it's France. No, it's China. No. Oh. Yeah, the Disneyland in Hong Kong is really popular during Halloween, apparently. I didn't know they had a Disneyland in, in China. If you hear barking and screaming, it's the four dogs that live in my parents' house. And I'm so sorry, people. Um, okay, this place, uh, it's called the Commemoration of All Departed. 
and they take flowers and trinkets to graves and sit and chat with them. Like they place chairs around the mm-hmm. fireplace, one for each departed person and one for each person still living. And then they sit and have conversations with the dead. This kind of sounds like Spain. It's the Czech Republic. Very close. close, close, pretty close. Yeah, it's like right, right up in there. Oh, this is just a question. What are the beans? It's on the other there? side of the ocean, so it's close. It's <laughs> just like it's across the pond. I read something about in Italy, something called the beans of the dead. And I really wanted to know if this was a real thing. It's something about like you prepare something during Halloween or All Saints Week, or there's bread involved. No. Is there no like? What do you we, do in Italy for Halloween? Well, Halloween is not a, we don't have Halloween in Italy. Now we do because we are borrowing from, you know, the United States, but, but we, we don't dress up. We don't, we don't mask up. We do that in, uh, during carnival. We call it carnival, which is in February. So Halloween, it, it doesn't really exist. What we do is el, el giorno dei morti, which is the day of the death, which is November 1st. Actually, no, November 1st is All Saints. November 2nd. So on All Saints, you pray to all the saints to, you know, like watch over me and blah, blah, blah. And you, and you go to church and you say all, all, all the names of all the saints. And it's long and exhausting and you're on your knees and you're like, uh, Saint Peter, pray for me. Saint Becky Joe, pray for me. And you go like that, like Saint Julia, pray for me. You know, the, the, the priest does that and the congregation, the rest the community replies, pray for me. Um so with cute. that. I like that. Well, yeah, after two hours on your knees, you're bleeding and, and you need to pee, and it's not that cute. Um, Sorry. especially when as a child you're forced to do that. Thank you. Anyway, this is November 1st. And then on November 2nd, the the day of the death, we all go to the cemetery to bring flowers. And that's it. Beautiful. But I love going to the cemetery because I'm Morticia. Yeah, you have to go in the wig now. That's yes. (laughs) Um, Okay, this is called, it's sort of a giveaway, but there is no, the translation for it is so ridiculous that I wouldn't make... The Fiesta de las Niatitas, which roughly translates to the Festival of Little Pug Noses. And I asked, I asked my friend who is from, who is from uh, South America, and he was like, "Yeah, it just it's like a it's a cute word for like." Is it is it Chile? It is Boliv- Bolivia, and they they do like the sugar skull thing, but they do it on real human skulls. So maybe you could have taken your little skull from your last adventure and painted it and gone to Bolivia. It's a little dark, but. No, not at all. Yeah, why not? Like, why, what are they, what is is the skull gonna do sitting in the ground? Why not fresh coat of paint? Yeah, giving it a second life, you know? Exactly. Uh, This is the last question, but I do this. God, I didn't get not even one. Oh yeah, I don't think I would have gotten any of these. in this, this is kind of sort of a giveaway, but their Halloween is it Mexico? practices, huh? Is that Mexico? It's, mm, so <laughs> close. Uh, they practice voodoo and they dance in the streets and drink and often douse themselves in chili infused rum. It's like hot rum. Uh, Cuba? Haiti. So close. So close. <laughs> <Dana. I> was- <laughs> <laughs> I just love that. People are dancing in the streets and drinking spicy rum and then just like pouring it all over their bodies. Like, whatever. <laughs> um, but apparently in Romania, they have a Dracula day in May because Dracula is really big in Romania. We should go. I know, right? Doesn't that sound fun? I've never thought about the potential tourism in Romania, but Ro- Dracula Plus, vampires are kind of hot. I think we should go. Totally. I mean, Don't you think? Are- been i mean do you have a favorite vampire movie what's that one there is one with brad pitt yeah interview with a vampire yeah i think that's probably that my favorite is one. chef's kiss but and well, well but j- that's just because brad pitt is just one of the most gorgeous men on on the planet so you know you can put him like like in front of a of a camera like this Still would watch it. And if it's Brad Pitt, I would still watch it for two hours. Like even if it's like 
He is too beautiful. <laughs> uh, the Sorry. um, uh, what is that? The Dust Till Dawn. The, yeah, from Dust Till Dawn. That's my favorite vampire. Yeah, film, even though it's half a vampire film. Right. I really like Dracula. Uh, the the Bram Stoker Dracula. Yes. That's a great movie. It's fantastic. I gotta love mm-hmm. you. I mean, I'm, it's Twilight ruined vampire novella for everybody, but at least we still have the greats. Um, thank you. That was my terrible Halloween game. Good to, we learned a lot today. Um, Festival of Little Pig Noses. I gotta go to that. That just sounds so, or Pug Noses, not p- Pug. Uh, <laughs> and before we get into the last song, you have you had an album and a book pop out this year. And I, you mentioned earlier that people can buy the bundle online. So where, yes. where can people do that? On juliemelanta.com. I didn't show the book. I showed the, uh, the record, but not the book. Ooh. Between the Strings. And this, again, was designed by Barbara F.G. And, um, and it's a little, it's a, it's, a sh- it's a short book. It's just little stories from the road and, and little like aphorisms and little, you know, little things. You, can, you don't have to read it like, like in a row. You can just open and read something. Um, and, you know, the other kind of the other side of being a musician, if you will. I love that. That's- and you can go to juliemelanta.com and get both. Yes, awesome. okay, Chris posted it on Facebook, so you'll be able to find that. And uh, also, your site design was designed by Sydney Detmar, who's... Uh, yes. Yes, Sydney is um, the girlfriend of the drummer for Madam Radar and a good Jew. And she's, she's amazing. Friend. She is so talented. If you need, like, go, I think, yeah. Chris also put Sydney's website on there too, because she's got, I think she just rebranded it. But she did yeah. your website too. Did you? She, um, yeah. What was it like working with Sydney? Oh, she's awesome. You know, we keep working together. She's a saint. She, she's very patient. Even when I think anyone else on the planet would have been like, <laughs> you asked me this like 45 times because I just, you know, I want to learn to do little things and I do know how to do little things on the website, but sometimes I keep, you know, like either through text message or email, like, Sydney, what was that thing you showed me how to do? And, and, she's, and she's very, she's very patient. She's very sweet. And every time she never loses and she's like, yeah, so you need to go there and go there. And someone else would have totally bite my head off. Like in half, Julie, you've asked me 25 times. She so she's, uh, broke her wrist at my 27th birthday party when we were roller skating. Oh, no. And I will never forget this. Her Cody is in the middle of the rink doing the circle spin move with somebody, with one of my friends. And, and Sydney comes up. She's got her arm. She's holding her arm. And she goes, hey, um, Becky Joe, will you help me find Cody? I, I think I broke my arm. Just like as calm, as calm as possible. And I was like, what? And I started freaking out. I was like, I was like get your boyfriend what are you doing and i was like what are you what are you your girlfriend's over here maimed and he's like freaking out now and i was like oh what can we do she is so calm and she's yeah, she so relaxed like yeah. nothing okay good and he and chris just said he posted the website on there it was just funny she was like holding it like nothing was wrong and everyone around her was like running amok and i'm just like and then for my 28th birthday because i'm an idiot we decided to do roller skating again and she came and she didn't roller skate but i'll be damned if she didn't okay show up dressed up she had a great, she's this the sweetest. Shout out to Sydney. Um, oh, and also Kim wanted to know, you know what? I'm going to save that question for the exclusive content. See what I did there? If you want, if you Ooh. want to uh, know what the question I would have asked, you can. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. We got, Julia's got a whole other wig change she's going to wear. So if you want to see the next uh, 10 minutes or so after this last song, join our patreon now so that you'll be able to see it uh what tomorrow when do you put those up there chris in a couple weeks you'll be able to see in a couple weeks so be sure to tune in uh julia let's hear one more song in the live stream give them what they want uh give it up ladies and gentlemen for julia milanta yay and by the way my other wig is great is even better than this one just so you know and uh, and Patreon is a great 
thing, like the greatest thing. And I have one too. Just, just, just I'm just accidentally drop, <laughs> dropping this piece of information. Um, thank you. Um, okay, still from the new record. And then we'll see what happens for the exclusive part. Uh, this one is called Quiet Fight. Another bridge, another wall, another piece that falls on the floor. You pick it up, you look away, not knowing what to say, what to ask for. There are dreams trapped inside all the things you haven't tried. There's a story wrapped around every word that has no sound. Ooh, another quiet fight won't make it all right. Too many wrongs, too many fears, our fate disappears. In thin air You say goodbye, you say no more But you keep the score Forget the prayer And your feet lead the way Your concrete heart wants to stay You search your pockets for a smile that make you go one more mile Ooh, another quiet fight won't make it all right Ooh, another quiet fight Won't make it all right Make it all right Ooh, another quiet fight Won't make it all right Another wall, another piece that falls on the floor. You pick it up, you look away, not knowing what to say, what to ask for. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Julia. Um, we're going to wrap you. up this live stream here in a hot second, but we're going to film some fun bonus content for you. So thanks to everyone who tuned in and had nice comments to say. Oh, uh, Steve says, get that book. I have a copy and I could not put it down. So thank you. Hey, it's got to do it. Um, and if you had a good time tonight, please, please, please Venmo. Miss Julia, uh, it's pinned in the comments. You have no excuse. Uh, <laughs> so that I can buy more wigs. Yeah, that's clearly what the wig budget, wig budget. Yeah. That's the goal. That's my New Year's resolution, actually, is to just have enough money for a wig budget. Um, so thanks again. We were going to see you hopefully as soon as, you know, this ish is over. But um, we hope you have a safe and happy travels to Italy. And we can't wait to see you Thank next you. time. So bye, people. Chris is going to cut the live feed. And then I have to do this until something happens. Da-da-da-da.